What is your confidence that the May government will be able to complete the legislative tasks and hammer out new trade agreements in order to avoid this hard Brexit? Well, we will start the legislative process uh, today. I think there's a great repeal bill being launched in the House of Commons by uh, the Secretary of State uh, uh, today. And uh, we launched the negotiations from our side with the delivery of the Article 50 letter yesterday. And as soon as the EU has agreed its negotiating mandate, then we can get down to work and we're confident we can do what needs to be done over the next two years. It had seemed that the European Union was intent on making an example out of the UK to discourage perhaps other countries from attempting their own referendum. Does Brussels have enough of an incentive to make a deal that's good for the UK as well as for the EU? Well, we hope so and we think so. Uh, there's a huge amount that goes on between uh, us already. Um, more than £500 billion worth of trade every year. Um, and a huge amount of interaction on security and foreign policy and, and other issues. And what the Prime Minister said she's looking for is a deep and special uh, relationship between the UK and the EU after we have left that covers security issues, covers economic issues, but has at its centre a comprehensive and ambitious free trade agreement. And that all of that is in both sides' interests, so we, we expect to be able to deliver that. We've seen European Commission President Jean-Claude uh, Juncker hit back at President Trump's support for Brexit, joking that he would perhaps champion American states that wanted to secede from the United States, uh, perhaps supporting an independent Texas or Ohio. Obviously, that was in jest, but what does this tell you about the state of fear among European elites of a Euro breakup? Well, what the Prime Minister has said is that we want to see a successful, prosperous and stable Europe on our doorstep. Um, she said that when she had an excellent uh, meeting with the President a few weeks ago. That's our position. And that is something she said again in the House of Commons yesterday. So that's where we're coming from. We want the EU to succeed, but the British people have decided that for the UK, our future should be outside. Got it. Uh, one thing that the Prime Minister obviously faces as well is the need to navigate a request from the Scottish National Party for another Scottish referendum. Uh, it's something that she's kind of held off for now. But I wonder, in the grand context of things, does Scotland need the UK more? Uh, or does uh, Great Britain need Scotland more? Who, who has the power in this relationship? Well, the Prime Minister, um, uh, all of us in the British government are strong supporters of the union between, uh, between England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and we want it to continue. There has been a referendum on Scottish membership uh, of the union, on uh, Scottish independence and there was a clear result a clear and, uh, and strong result in favour of the Union. And the Prime Minister said yesterday, now is not the time for a second referendum on Scottish independence, especially since, especially since we're about to go into the negotiations uh, on uh, our future relationship with Europe, and surely we should settle that first, get an outcome of that first, before there is any consideration of this, uh, this issue of Scottish independence. Right. It might serve as a distraction. Let's move on to the relationship between the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, President Trump, as you know, campaigned on breaking the rules flouting convention. From where you sit, is he ripping up the script when it comes to the special relationship between the U.K. and the U.S.? One of the things I have been most impressed by and most encouraged by since the new U.S. US administration uh, came into office is how good and positive and uh, uh, strong the relationship is uh, between the two governments. Prime Minister was the first foreign leader into the White House. Foreign Secretary was here last week. Our National Security Advisor was here this week. Uh, all the vibes, I can tell you, are extremely good, extremely warm, huge amount of interaction, lots of consultation. It's a very good feel. And of course, we know when the Prime Minister was here in Washington, uh, she pushed hard for a bilateral trade deal. It's clearly a priority. From where you sit, how big of a priority is it for Washington? Do you get a sense that you're at the top of the, top of the list, middle of the list? Well, the President was clear, and we were very grateful for this, that as soon as we were ready to negotiate a free trade deal, 
then the US side would be open and ready to start those discussions. Uh, I've since talked to Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, a number of other figures in this uh, administration. I get the same message of openness and willingness and positivity from all of them. We can't actually sign a free trade deal with the United States until the day that we leave the European Union, but we can certainly start discussions on it, start talks on it, um, and there have been some contacts already, and we will continue and intensify those contacts, those talks, uh, over the coming months. Right, hammering out the terms of uh, any kind of trade deal. Are we likely, Ambassador Derek, to hear any concrete news uh, soon on the much trumpeted state visit by President Trump to the UK, or do you think that's been pushed back to the back burner? I think uh, we are discussing uh, dates um, with, the, uh, with the White House, with, with the President's team. I must say I wouldn't expect an announcement soon, but that's perfectly normal. Uh, the president has a lot of commitments, uh, and uh, you know, when we're ready, we'll make the announcement, but it's something that we look forward to, and I'm sure will be a spectacular success when it happens. And final question to you, Ambassador. What is the number one interest when it comes to trade, when it comes to uh, political ties that the U.K. needs to advance when it comes to the U.K.-U.S. relationship? This is a special relationship across the national security, defense, intelligence, foreign policy, economic and trade field. All of it is important. But just think of this. Um, a million Americans here in this country go to work every day in British companies over here. Um, a million Brits uh, go to work in American companies over in the UK. So the amount of interaction already is huge and the potential for us to have an even stronger trade relationship and mutual investment relationship is obviously, obviously there and something that we intend to work on strongly in the next few months.